Now that we've covered when aspiration and injection of the knee are appropriate and the anatomy involved, let's dive into the supplies you'll need and how to perform the procedure. Aside from your basic procedural supplies, if you're aspirating and injecting, you'll need 2 milliliters of 1% lidocaine without epinephrine, 1 milliliter of 40 mg per ml corticosteroid, a 5 milliliter syringe for the medications, and a second empty 10 milliliter syringe attached to a 38 millimeter 22 gauge needle. Draw up the lidocaine and steroid together and set that syringe aside. Then attach a 22 gauge needle to the 10 milliliter syringe, making sure that the syringe is not too tightly attached. After aspirating, you can use a forceps to swap the syringes while leaving the needle in place. This allows you to avoid subjecting your patient to two needles. Once you've obtained consent from the patient, mark the triangular joint space just medial to the patellar tendon with a vial cap and sterilize the skin, you can put on your sterile gloves and proceed. You can use ethyl chloride spray to numb the skin before inserting your needle. Then enter the skin perpendicularly while pulling back on the plunger until you see a flash of synovial fluid. At this point, if you need to drain an effusion, you can do so by continually pulling back on the plunger. In this case, there was nothing to drain. Then, if you're planning on injecting the knee joint, grip the needle with either your gloved hand or with a forceps. Twist off the aspiration syringe and attach the smaller steroid syringe. Briefly pull back on your plunger once again to ensure you're still in the joint space. Then, inject the lidocaine steroid mixture. When you're finished injecting all the medication, withdraw your needle and apply a bandage. For another look at how to aspirate the knee joint, check out MedMastery's Emergency Procedures Masterclass Part 2 course. Let's take a look at what to do after the procedure. If you were performing a diagnostic aspiration, you'd be using a collection container or tube to send the fluid from your 10 milliliter syringe for a gram stain and culture, a cell count, and a crystal search. If you were performing a steroid injection, the patient should improve within 24 hours or less. As suggested above, steroid injections should not be performed more often than every three months, regardless of the indication, due to the risk of cartilage loss. In the meantime, consider referring the patient to physical therapy if they haven't done this already. This will aid in improving the patient's function and gait while the steroids are cooling the inflammation.